So while we are assembling ourselves up here, I just want to say for those of you who are not already a member of this particular community at UCSF, I think you can see uh, the amplitude of full presence, which makes me so thrilled to have been honored with the position of being with this group this year. So um, what's, what's going to happen now is uh, we're, we thought we would give you a demonstration of the way that poetry magnetizes multiplicity of response. End of life is enormous, and there is no one way to meet it or face it, uh, even if it happens in an instant. Uh, one can be there inside the experience, one can be a witness to the experience, one can be grieving, one can be looking into the future of its occurrence. And all of these things appear with extraordinary, absolutely extraordinary uh, particularity and specificity in the poems of Emily Dickinson. And so Sandra and Shira and I are going to present the slightest sampling of uh, Emily's poems having to do with death and end of life. And what I, what I think you will hear in them is not only the um, complexity and nuance and subtlety and, and multipleness, but also that no matter how she is looking in the most seemingly standing back objective poem, uh, you can hear in her voice the flood of tears and compassion and co-inhabitants of being. Because I could not stop for death, he kindly stopped for me. The carriage held but just ourselves and immortality. We slowly drove, he knew no haste, and I had put away my labor and my leisure too for his civility. We passed the school where children strove at recess in the ring. We passed the fields of gazing grain. We passed the setting sun, or rather, he passed us. The dews drew quivering and chill. For only gossamer, my gown, my tippet, only tulle. We paused before a house that seemed a swelling of the ground. The roof was scarcely visible, the cornice in the ground. Since then, Tis centuries, and yet feels shorter than the day I first surmised the horses' heads were toward eternity. I died for beauty but was scarce adjusted in the tomb when one who died for truth was lain in an adjoining room. He questioned softly why I failed. For beauty, I replied. And I for truth, themself are one, we brethren are, he said. And so, as kinsmen met a night, we talked between the rooms until the moss had reached our lips and covered up our names. There's been a death in the opposite house as lately as today. I know it by the numb look such houses have alway. The neighbors rustle in and out. The doctor drives away. A window opens like a pod, abrupt, mechanically. 
Somebody flings a mattress out. The children hurry by. They wonder if it died on that. I used to when a boy. The minister goes stiffly in as if the house were his and he owned all the mourners now and little boys besides. And then the milliner and the man of the appalling trade to take the measure of the house. There'll be that dark parade of tassels and of coaches soon. It's easy as a sign, the intuition of the news in just a country town. To die takes just a little while. They say it doesn't hurt. It's only fainter by degrees and then it's out of sight. A darker ribbon for a day, a crepe upon the hat, and then the pretty sunshine comes and helps us to forget. The absent mystic creature that, but for love of us, had gone to sleep that soundest time without the weariness. I felt a funeral in my brain, and mourners to and fro kept treading, treading, till it seemed that sense was breaking through. And when they all were seated, a service like a drum kept beating, beating, till I thought my mind was going numb. And then I heard them lift a box and creak across my soul with those same boots of lead again. Then space began to toll as all the heavens were a bell and being but an ear and I and silence, some strange race, wrecked, solitary, here. Death sets a thing significant the eye had hurried by, except a perished creature entreat us tenderly to ponder little workmanships in crayon or in wool with this was last her fingers did, industrious until the thimble weighed too heavy, and stitches stopped themselves. And then twas put among the dust upon the closet shelves. A book I have, a friend gave, whose pencil here and there had notched the place that pleased him. At rest his fingers are. Now when I read, I read not, for interrupting tears obliterate the etchings too costly for repairs. I heard a fly buzz when I died. The stillness round my form was like the stillness in the air between the heaves of storm. The eyes beside had wrung them dry, and breaths were gathering sure for that last onset when the king be witnessed in his power. I willed my keepsakes, signed away what portion of me I could make assignable, and then there interposed a fly. With blue, uncertain, stumbling buzz between the light and me. And then the windows failed, and then I could not see to see.
A coffin is a small domain, yet able to contain a citizen of paradise in its diminished plane. A grave is a restricted breadth, yet ampler than the sun and all the seas he populates and lands he looks upon. To him who on its small repose bestows a single friend, circumference without relief or estimate or end. The bustle in a house, the morning after death, is solemnest of industries enacted upon earth. The sweeping of the heart and putting love away we shall not want to use again until eternity. Safe in their alabaster chambers, untouched by morning and untouched by noon, lie the meek members of the resurrection, rafter of satin and roof of stone. Grand go the years in the crescent above them, Worlds scoop their arcs, and firmaments row, diadems drop, and doges surrender, soundless as dots on a disk of snow. My life closed twice before its close. It yet remains to see if immortality unveil a third event to me. So huge, so hopeless to conceive as these that twice befell. Parting is all we know of heaven and all we need of hell. Tis not that dying hurts us so, tis living hurts us more. But dying is a different way, a kind behind the door. The southern custom of the bird that ere the frosts are due accepts a better latitude. We are the birds that stay. The shiverers round farmers' doors for whose reluctant crumb we stipulate till pitying snows persuade our feathers home. <laughs> <laughs> 